good night everyone welcome welcome to another live stream may god bless you may god keep you i'm not sure if you guys have seen the topic um i want to call this one uh the fighting the good fight of faith <laughs> and what it means to really what it really what really what really includes us fighting this fight of faith what, what, what really includes us walking with christ you know because right now what's been taught at least for most in most places i thought to fight this fight is to always fight against physical enemy you know what's been taught now when it comes to our fight is sometimes even working witchcraft that, that they believe fighting but let me tell the people the real fight is is with ourselves. when you start to become more rooted and grounded in christ you start to realize that the real enemy the real enemy is that flesh that's fighting against the spirit the real enemy is not, not anybody else but that flesh that's trying to keep you in sin how long will you be how long will you be on for well i'm not sure um sister talia you know we won't by the spirit of god you know over the over the spirit leave lead the life i just move um with that so i'm not sure but if you cannot stay for those who cannot stay remember that you can always um subscribe to the channel um travis the chosen one as i usually repost um these live streams there different than other videos i repost some of the live streams as well so for those who can stay you can always go and subscribe and you'll see um the repost of this live stream but yes as i was saying greetings um stand for god blessings to you sister yes glory to god for that um a lot a quite a number of people are benefiting from the channel benefiting from the lessons you know solid food solid food is on that channel <laughs> glory to god all glory to god because god is the one that has been teaching me right throughout the years right throughout the nights the holy spirit has been my teacher the scriptures has been my guide and the holy spirit has been guiding me into all truth each and every day when i open up the word of god when I'm reading the word, the Holy Spirit is just revealing, revealing things more and more to me, re revealing the deeper things to me of the scriptures. Things are not, not so obvious. It's like it's there, but without the Holy Spirit, I cannot see it. And so glory to God for that, that there's so much solid food on that, on the channel. So much sound doctrine. And let me tell the people, just go there and share those videos because so, as I always say, sound doctrine is rare in this time. You know, majority of sermons is all about preaching about your enemies, you know? Preaching about just your enemy this and your enemy that and you know right now right now um people don't people don't preach things at least most people don't preach things about the spirit and about us walking the spirit. It's mostly about the flesh is being taught right now. It's mostly fleshly things. Right now, most prophets, apostles, whatever they, they want to call themselves, they preach on, they preach on topics as, as if they're trying to make you into some celebrity. They're not trying to make you into a child of God, to make you and to mold you into a son of God or a daughter of Zion. But it's like they're preaching to try and make... A, a, it's most celebrity um, content. People are trying to make people into celebrity. More than make people into a child of God. We're not here to, we're, we're here to make ourselves into celebrities because about 90% of celebrities are, are children of the devil. Just the truth. About 90% of these celebrities are all child of the devil. And we pray that they may be, uh, we always pray that they may come out, out, of, out, of this, out of the hands of Satan and into the hands of God. So we're not here to try and be celebrities. We're trying to be sons and daughters of God. We're trying to be men of God, women of God, children of God. But most people, at least most of these modern day prophets now, they are just teaching people how to, you know, be amongst the rich and the famous and be amongst the affluent people 
and that will show that you are blessed by God. I'm not saying that you cannot reach the high heights in God. Oh yes. But if the main if the main message is all about you being amongst the rich and famous and those who everybody is hearing about and being you're not trying to make yourself into a child of God. You're making you're making some most of the time you're making yourself into a child of the devil. You know, most of these sermons now is all about um enemy, enemy. You're praying against your mother, you're praying against your your, 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 your sister, you're praying against this, you're praying against. And these are all those physical people. We're not praying against the, the spirit behind these people. The spirit, the spirit that, that are behind these people, controlling these people. Many of these people are under some strongholds that they have participated in. Or sometimes these things are just in the bloodline. You know, so these, these, these sermons are not truly helping us. They're just keeping us in the flesh. Keeping us continually hating. Hating people. Good night, Sister Connie. Welcome. Good night, Sister Ali. God bless you. Good night, Sister Tanya. God bless you. I'm glad to see the family coming in, coming in. The members of Perfecting the Saints Ministry. Highly appreciate you guys being here with us tonight. God bless you, Tanya Brown. Connie. Ali, I love you guys very much. You don't know how much this ministry is, is a blessing um, to me. You know, many people say that this ministry is a blessing to them, but let me tell you, the ministry is a blessing to me because when I see the changes people are making because of what's happening through this ministry, it only encourages me more to stay more rooted and grounded and all of that. Uh, but I've been doing repentance and being raw with God, my son, because the whole house Saturday. Glory to God. Glory to God for that. Stand for God. All glory to the name of our Lord and Savior, Yahshua Amashiach. Yahshua Amashiach, our Lord and Savior. I see... Um, Sister Stand for God said that she's going to the playlist. Oh yes, let's go to that playlist. So today I want to talk about what it means. Or what entails us fighting this good fight of faith. So as you guys join in, go ahead, share this out, tap the screen, and let us get started. The first thing that we're gonna do is pray because you know we can't do nothing without the, without the Spirit of God. I am nothing without him. I'm only a vessel and an empty vessel without him. So let's get into prayer. Heavenly Father, we enter your gates with thanksgiving, O oh great God. God of Israel, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of the living and not the dead, the great Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last, the one and only true witness, glory to your name, the Prince of Peace, the everlasting God, God Almighty, we come to you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Yahshua, Amashiach, our only way to you, for no man can come to the Father except through the Son, except through the way, the truth, and the very life itself. And so, Lord, we come before you, thanking you for another opportunity to gather here virtually and to edify the saints and to build up ourselves in our most holy faith in this dark and wicked generation and i pray O oh lord god that your presence may be with us O oh god i pray O oh father god that you may grace us with your presence wherever we are and i pray O oh father god that as you enter amongst us O oh lord god that your spirit move in each and every individual tonight that your that your spirit especially move to your servant here we are seeking to edify your saints and to perfect your saints and to um teach your children who is here tonight and all those who you will send here tonight. May you cover them all and keep them, Lord God. Protect them from the hands and, and the plans of the enemy continually. Protect them from Satan who is always trying to come and steal the seed and exchange the seed for bad seed in their heart. Heavenly Father God, we pray that you rebuke the devil from over this live stream and every other individual who is not here in sincerity, Father God. May you write a standard against them who are always speaking against the truth, seeking to rest your words, seeking to come against your servant and his holy ones who are here. Father God, may you arise and scatter all your enemies and all those who hate righteousness, hate your righteousness and hate your ways. 
And may I pray, O Father God, that even your spirit right now may, 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 may convict them that they may repent because we know that you don't desire the, the, the destruction of the wicked, but that they may repent. But nevertheless, Father God, cover those who are here in sincerity of heart, who are seeking to grow more in their faith, seeking to be more at one with you, seeking to learn how they can please you, seeking how they can become one with you, seeking how they can live a life that's very pleasing to you in, in your eyesight. Because we are here, Lord God. Your children are here. Your ones who you have chosen are here, seeking your truth, seeking to live by your truth and nothing but your truth. Walking in this life with, with the fear of God in their hearts. Father God, they are truly here, Lord God, and I thank you. I thank you that many a times we may feel like we are alone on this journey, but there are many of us all over the world who are truly seeking your truth, who fear you, truly fear you. I want to know the way of how to please you. And Heavenly Father God, may you guide my mouth to speak mighty truth to their hearts, to speak mighty truth to their very soul and convict their soul to continue on the path of righteousness, to convict their soul, to build up their own relationship with you through our Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. But cover us, keep us, guide us, direct us continually. In the name of the Lord, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we all pray and we all agree by saying Amen. And Amen. Glory to God. Amen and Amen. Glory. Alright, so tonight, we want to talk about what it, what it means to, or what entails us fighting this fight of faith. Because each day is a fight. You know, each day is a fight, and that fight is not with flesh and blood. That fight is with, with principalities and powers, and also that fight, the, the main fight is with our flesh. As the Bible said, that the spirit or the flesh war against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And we want to know how can we go about walking this walk and what it entails in this walk. We're, we're, we're going to talk about that tonight. And for all those who are here, I always remember that once you come on this live stream, I will go, I will go in, into a, 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 a teaching session. I always have your notebook. I always have your Bible. At least get your notebook to write down the scriptures so that when we finish with the live stream, you can go and revisit the scriptures, read them over, you know, and see if these things are true. Read them over and pray for ways of applying them, of making them real to you. Because the Bible says if you're a hearer of the word and not a doer of the word, you are deceiving yourself. And we don't we don't want to come here and hear the word and don't and don't practice it. And go through self-deception, going through deceiving ourselves. You know, we don't want to be like what mainstream Christianity is presenting to the world. Glory to God. Mainstream Christianity is presenting to the world people who preach about something but don't live it. We're not here for that. We are here to truly learn the ways of God, truly learn the truth of God, and then start to apply it. Start to truly apply it to our life, to make it real, to make it practical. Because the Bible says that it's not everybody who says, Lord, Lord, or not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, is going to enter the kingdom. But those who are actually doing His will. So, a part of our thing is us doing what God wants us to do. Doing the will of God. That is it. The Bible also says that faith without works is dead. You know, so we might hint, we're not in the faith, but we have to put in that work. The Bible also says that we must work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. And so this work in this this um work includes us putting in the necessary work, put in the necessary effort to be perfected, put in the necessary effort to start to, to walk and please God. You know, it's not something that we just go into and then say, yes, we're saved and still walk in lies and deceit and sexual immoralities and, and gossiping and backbiting and, and all of that. That's, that, that. These things are only bringing a reproach. These things only are bringing a reproach um, on the name of our faith. So I said, have you heard from Minister Williams yet, bro? No, I haven't heard from her, uh, um, from him. As yet, um, sister, I haven't heard from him at all. Hopefully, we'll see him um, very soon by the will of God. 
Amen. So what entails or uh, what what includes this work? Hold on, let me go and, and share this out because I forgot to share this to a few people. Um, let me share this to a few more people. Practicing to live a life pleasing to God. Amen, Sister Tanya. Does Derek, so Elder Gary have a ministry over there? Oh, yes, oh, yes. In uh, I think it's in Kingston, if I'm remembering right. His brother used to have one um, before he stepped down, for Jennings making a step down, but I think it's in Kingston, if, if I'm remembering right. All right, so let's get into it now. What does this walk entails? What does it mean to walk this walk with Christ? I'm only gonna give you a, I'm gonna give you a few of them that I've found along the way, and it entails so much more. It, it entails us um, continually in the Word, learn what, what is in the Word, and and then applying it as well. But the first things when it comes to walking with Christ uh, and this walk, I will have to fight to continue in is to love the truth and live by the truth that's that's one of the first things is that we must love the truth and live by the truth the bible says that christ himself says that god is seeking god is actually looking out for those people who want to serve him in spirit and in truth so we must love the truth people and he seek to live by the truth. We must seek to live by the truth of God. And remember, the truth is the word of God. As Christ says, sanctify them with your truth. Thy word is truth. So the first thing is that we want to seek to seek the truth of God and then live by that truth. We cannot live by lies, people, and believe that we're serving God. We cannot we, we cannot love lies and believe that we're actually serving God. That's, that's not how it works, people. If nobody's telling the truth, here I am to tell the truth. You cannot live by lies and believe that you're serving the Almighty. You have to learn the truth and live by that truth. You know, let's go into, I'm going to go into um, Revelation here. A book that, that is hardly read right now. And that should be read. A book that is hardly read but should be read. We're going to go into Revelation first. We're going to go into Revelation chapter. Um, I want to find a scripture in Revelation. That is very scary if you think about it. Remember the people of God. I want to find the scripture in Revelation here. Revelation chapter 22. I'm going to Re Revelation 22. So Revelation 22 and verse 15. So Revelation 22 and verse 15, that's the first scripture we're going to start off with here. 
And it says here, For without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth, that's one, and maketh a lie. Let's go, let's read it again. For without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and them murderers them. If you love lies, the Bible say here, and you make up lies, you are going off into the lake of fire as well. This is the word of God. This is something that people are telling you about. So I'm going to appeal to the word of God and show you what is in the word to protect your soul. The scripture is Revelation chapter 22 and verse 15. Revelation 22 and verse 15. I'm going to read it one more time for those who are just joining in. It says here, For without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. If you love lie, you go straight to you go, you go straight to hell. That's what we must walk into. We must not love lies and delight in lies. As people of God, we must delight in truth. We must not delight in lies. A part of a part of even um, when the Bible was explaining what what charity is, it talks about that um, charity does not rejoice. I believe not does not rejoice in lies, but it rejoices in truth. So if we have true charity in us, if we have true love in us, we must rejoice in truth and not lies. So walking with God, you must walk with truth. The Bible also says that the, 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 a part of the full armor of God is the belt of truth. So for our, in order for us to be even um, fully equipped, we must have truth wrapped around our waist to hold up our waist. Not lies. Glory to God. Somebody say read, read 16. So let's read uh, verse 16. Let me read verse 16 too, just uh, like uh, what, what mom said. It said, I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. Glory to God. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. Amen and amen. So you see that? This is Jesus who, are, who, who say what? I Jesus sent my angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. So every church needs to know that. Every person who said they are following Christ needs to know all, all of this. Needs to know what is in here. That if you love lie and you love to make up lies and live by lies, you're going into the lake of fire. People of God, hell is real. Don't let nobody fool you about hell is not real. All this, I see, I see these gay pastors coming out talking about hell is not real. I see all these pastors coming about it, not interested in the people's soul, not, pre, not preparing the people to meet the Lord when he comes. Keeping the people distracted. Majority of these people right now, they're keeping people distracted from what is important on this walk. Your soul is important on this walk. Your soul is more important than your enemies on this, uh, on this earth. Your enemies are just passing by just like you. But when these people come, come to you and, and, and are distracting you about your enemy, every day they come, come telling you about your enemy, your enemy, your enemy, your enemy. What about your soul? What about your soul, people of God? Your soul is so important, more important than anybody else. Nobody can save you on this walk. Nobody is your savior on this walk. Your soul is more important than the house and the care and the land where I preach to you about. Your soul is more important than, than, than the visa and the traveling where I tell you about. These people are hirelings. They are here to keep you destructive from what is more important. Your soul is important, people. The house, the care, and the land, it can always come and it can always go to. In a hard forget house, care, and land. Once you work, discipline, all of that. Make 
proper decisions. Stop giving away your, your substance to, to ungrateful people. I know we are giving substance to cause some people take a substance and try to and try work witchcraft on you as well. Make wise decisions. But these people are out here keeping you distracted from what the walk is really really about. The walk is about your soul. The walk is about you becoming like Adam again. God wants us to be like um God wants to bring us back to the point like in the in the Garden of Eden. That's why he sent Christ to die for our sins. The perfect man to die for our sins. That's why he came in flesh actually. To die for our sins. For what? Our soul. Not for your house. Not for enemy. Not for care. Not for land. But for your soul. Your soul is so important that this man w was willing to die for it. That is what is important. So when you see these people, all they're coming to do is, is distract you. Distract you. Make you out here focus on enemy every single day. I'm not saying that you should not be humble and vigilant. Because the Bible says you must be humble and vigilant. But if you get up every single day just focusing on enemy, enemy, enemy. Before you know it, you're working in the flesh. You're working in hatred. You're working in strife. You're working in seditions. You're working in all these things that are, that are works of the flesh. And not walking in the spirit. Let me tell you, when you start to truly walk in the spirit, you're going to see who, who are the real enemy. When you start to truly walk after the spirit, you're going to see who, who is the real enemy. You're going to say that the real enemy is, the, is that flesh of yours that is trying to fight against the spirit. You're going to realize that the real enemy is that flesh, is this, is this flesh that, that, that wants to keep you back from serving God fully. This flesh that, that constantly makes you fall off into sin. And then start who wants to make you feel unworthy afterwards. You gotta realize that the real enemy is his flesh. Can let me tell you this: when a man's ways please the Lord, he makes even his enemy to be at peace with him. Don't worry about your enemy. Worry about you walking in the spirit. So that you don't fulfill the lust of the flesh. Don't be distracted, people of God. Stay focused on what you should stay focused on. Stay focused on putting your life together by, by the word of God. Stay focused on doing the will of God. Stay focused on your reasonable service. Stay focused on what is important. That soul of yours that Christ came and died for is important. Stop making these clowns come and, and, and distract you from the important things. Some of these clowns come and distract you from keeping your linen white. From keeping your linen white. Your linen must be clean and white. Revelation say what? It is the righteous, righteous acts of the saints. The righteous acts of the saints, Revelation says. Let me read the scripture here. Revelation 19 and verse 7. To verse 8. Revelation 19, verse 7 to verse 8. It says, Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him. For the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife has made herself ready. Who is his wife? We are his wife. We, the bride, are the wife of Christ. And we, as the wife, have to make ourselves ready for our husband. And look what, it, what, what the Bible says here now. Verse 8 says, And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, white, sorry, clean and white. For the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. What is the fine linen, people of God? What is that fine linen? The righteousness of of the saints people seek his righteousness your linen is the righteousness that's your linen is you walking in god's righteousness is you seeking for the kingdom of god and his righteousness don't worry about what's going to get added unto you christ will add whatever he want to add unto you make yourself ready the bible say here as a bride 
Stop focusing on enemies. Stop making these people take your hand and tell you to focus on enemy every day. I tell you to pray against this and pray against that. I give you oil and water. I give you kerchief and gadgets. All type of witchcraft gadgets to keep you distracted and focus on enemies when your soul is at risk. When your soul need making and molding by God. When your soul need to be subjected under the mighty hands of God. When you need to start to subject your body and make it a living sacrifice unto God. And try to make it holy and acceptable unto Him. Because that's your reasonable service. When you need to start to, when you need, when you need, when you need to, start to transform that mind. And start making this, this mind conform to the world. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Glory to God. That's your focus, people of God. But it's so sad. It is so sad that the people love the, 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 the false prophets and love the false prophecies. It is a fulfillment of what is, is, what is written in um, Jeremiah. It is a fulfillment of what is written in Jeremiah. And we can see it happening right now. What did Jeremiah say? Let's see if I can find it here. Holy Spirit, help me tonight. Help me, lead me to your word, God. Lead me to your word and by your word. Lead me to your word, oh God. I'll find it. It's not plugging. Jeremiah. Let me find it. Jeremiah 23. 23? I would say here in Jeremiah 14, 14. Then the Lord said unto me, The prophets prophesy lie in my name. I sent them not, neither have I command them, neither spark unto them. They prophesy unto you a false vision and divination, a thing of, of naught, and the deceit of their heart. This is what false prophet, prophets do. They come and they come to us tell you about your business. They come tell you how much, how much children you have. You have five children, right? Do you know me? No, you don't know me. You have, you, you, you have, you have, you have two daughters and three sons. And the last week you were trying to get this done and it was not done. Do you know me? And, and I, no. This is what false prophets do. They do divination and get you focused on the flesh. They will never come to you about your soul. But they come to you with the spirit of divination to look off into your business. To look off into your business and get your focus on fleshly things. Let me find the scripture here. Glory to God. Jeremiah 5. Jeremiah 5. Jeremiah 5 and verse 31. This is the main one I was looking for. It's the main one I was looking for. Greetings, Brother Walker. God bless you. Thanks. Glad to see you here. Jeremiah 5 and verse 31. It says here, The prophets prophesy falsely, and the priests be a rule by their own means. And my people love to have it so. This is what the people love now. The people don't love the truth. The people hate, the people hate the truth, but love false doctrines and false prophecies. People say that the Bible say here that the people love it so. Sound doctrine is not welcome anymore. People don't have a sound mind to, to bear sound doctrine. The Bible says in the last days, people are, are not gonna be able to uh, bear sound doctrine. They will have itchy ears. 
They want to hear about the, the, the enemy dying. People that they don't like should, 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 should dead. They want to hear about visas. They want to hear about this, this is a new month and this is your month. This is not your month. No day belongs to any one of us. No week belongs to any one of us. No month belongs to any one of us. No year belongs to any one of us. People tell, come and tell us, this is a, a, a fear year. No, this is not my year. This is what, the, this is, every single day is what the Lord has made. And I must rejoice and be glad in it. I must be grateful for every single day. I must be grateful for every single day. But they come to you with every single every single month. They come with you with a with a new prophecy. Oh, March is the month of 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 of, 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 of um release. Oh, January is the month of shifting. Oh, February is the month of du duplication. April is the month of multiplication. I declare and decree. They are not speaking by the Spirit of God. They are not speaking by the Spirit of God, people of God. They are keeping you distracted from what is important. Your soul is important. Glory to God. Oh, yeah. oh yes, Brother Walker. Every sucker, every second is of the Lord. And they come to tell you. They come to tell you. Huh? Come to tell you about this is your month. This is your week. This is your year. It's not yours. You better pray. That, that, that all go well by the will of God. Did you, know, did, did you know people of God? Well, Andy, did you know that? If you're out here planning your things out, planning things out as if you own the whole month, you know, that, that, that's an evil thing you're doing? That's evil, you know? I'm going to show you according to the scripture. I'm going to show you according to the scripture. Let me see if I can find it. In, uh, it's in the book of James. May is the month of overflow. Oh, yes. <laughs> May is the, is the overflow. Huh? These people are keeping you distracted. Let me find it in James. So you can find it here. James chapter 4. James chapter 4. I'm going to read it here. James chapter 4 and verse 13. Listen what the scripture is saying here, people of God. I said, July the 7th month, the month of completion. <laughs> yes, and I say, yes, it's completion time. They are keeping you distracted, people of God. Your soul is what should be important. Listen to this, people. James chapter 4 and verse 13. It says here, Go to know, go to know, he that say, Today or tomorrow we will go into such a city and continue there a year and buy and sell and get gain. Whereas he know not what shall be on the morrow. For what is your life? Listen to these people of God. It is even a vapor that appeared for a little time and then vanish away. For that he ought to say, if the Lord will, this or you should speak. You should speak and say, if it's God's will, we should, we can, we, we're going to do this and going to do that. That's how you speak. You don't speak as if you own no month and own no ear. Don't mean nobody can tell you. Don't mean the prophet can tell you say, I fear a month and I fear ear. Not no gosso. Not no gosso. This is what the word of God says. The word of God says, For that he ought to say, If it's the Lord will, we shall live and do this or that. But now he rejoice in your boasting. Listen to the word of God. All such rejoicing is evil. That's the word of God. That's not my word. Don't, don't get vexed with me, no one said, uh, uh, Brother Chavez. 
a foolish yard chart, a foolish yard talk. That's the word of God. The word of God says all such boasting is evil. So what they come and teaching you is evil. To tell you about your own month or your own year. It's not your year. It's not your week. You must humble yourself under the mighty hands of God and ask God to, 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 to keep you. Say, by, by the Lord's will, I will do this. And by the Lord's will, I will do that. When this prophet come and tell you about a few months, a lie them and tell they're prophesying. They, 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 they're prophesying out, out of their own belly. They're prophesying out of their own flesh. The scripture said it here, it's clear. All such boasting is evil. These people are preaching to you evil doctrines. Doctrine of the flesh to keep you wanting to be like some celebrity. Right now, I'll be a celebrity doctrine. Everybody wants to be a celebrity. They don't want to be like they don't, they don't, they don't want to be sons of God and, and, and daughters of Zion anymore. They wanna be celebrities. A celebrity preaching and go on. Want to be amongst the rich and the famous and the affluent. Want to be amongst the great and the mighty. You don't realize that people of God. You don't realize that. It's all about being rich and wealthy and be amongst the affluent. And you don't realize that majority of the social media Christians, they want to be celebrity Christians. The social media prophets want to be celebrity prophets. The social media, uh, the, the, the social media apostles want to be celebrity apostles. Everybody want to be celebrity. They don't, they don't want to be sons and daughters. They don't want to be sons and daughters. They want to be celebrities. They want to be like they want to be like Hollywood people, devil children. They want to be like. Oh yes, brother Lushian, putting themselves before God. Oh yes, and then keeping the people distracted. That's this is the thing, you know. They might keep the people them distracted from what is important. The people's souls are important, but they might keep them distracted from pan pan affluence and and pan and pan and pan and, and traveling the world and and all these type of things. Keeping the people distracted, not training the people up in righteousness. The Bible says that every single word of God is inspired by the Spirit of God, and it's there for what doctrine, for reproof. And for training up in righteousness. The, every single minister must be training you up in righteousness. They must be pushing you towards the righteousness of God. They must be pulling you away from sinful acts. They must be preaching to you that you may that you may have a heart to have a godly sorrow and a worldly sorrow. They must be they must they must be doing that. Right now, I'll be a sermons of pride and sermons of, 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 of flesh and sermon and sermons of killing and trampling down enemy. Sermons of enemies, but yet we are we are becoming the enemies of God. We don't worry about us becoming an enemy of God because we, we want to be a friend of this world. The Bible said those who are a friend of this world is an enemy to God. Here we are trying to be a friend of this world, trying to be like the world. And out there cuss about enemy. No, no, say we are we are becoming enemies unto God. We are becoming enemies unto God. Out here focusing on enemies. We're becoming enemies unto God. Out here focusing on the wrong things. Can you imagine that? The Bible said those who love the world, the love of God is not in them. Oh yes, Sister Connie, enemy to our own self. Glory to God. May we stop being distracted. Let me tell you this, people of God. The devil can make you rich, but he can't make you righteous. The devil can make you rich, but he cannot make you righteous. When, when he was tempting Christ, he not, he, he not tell us he can't give anything. He can't give him the whole world. He can't give him everything if he doesn't bow down to him. So let me tell you, many of these, many of these preachers and pastors and prophets, they are working for the devil. That's why they come and offer your visas. That's why they come and offer your riches. And you will get it, but they will never offer you a consecrated life. They will never encourage you to live a consecrated life. So when they come and you sow seed in them, you will get things. 
But what about the consecrated life for Christ? The life to walk, to walk in the spirit and not in the flesh. How can I not tell you about that? Remember this. Keep it in your mind. The devil can't make you rich, but he can't make you righteous. He can't, he can't bring you out in righteousness. They encourage you to pray for materialism. Amen. They encourage you to pray for material things. When the Bible said that all these things will be added unto you. Thank you very much, wifey. All these things will be added unto you. So you don't have to pray about what's going to be added unto you. Why would, I, why would I, I be out here praying about something what God will give me? God said, if you don't seek first my kingdom and my righteousness, all these things will be added unto you. And here I am, I, here I am still sitting down the same way. Oh God, add this unto me. Oh God, add this unto me. Add this, add this, add that, add this. Add this for me, add that for me. But he don't say, me, he might add them already. What I, must know is, what I must do now is seek first his kingdom. And seek first his righteousness. And let these things be added unto me. And let these things be added unto me. Nowadays, people preach, oh, oh you, you can't trust God. I basically, they, they must say, no, they must tell us you cannot trust God. And them, if you trust, if you just sow a seed in me, watch what happen. Right now, people, right now, these preachers, are, these prophets, so called prophets, are convicting you of your money, of your giving, than convicting you of your sin. They convict you of your giving more than or they convict you of your sin. That's, what, that, that's what's going on now. They will make you feel bad for not giving them no money, for not sowing no seed, for not doing this, but guess what? They will never make you feel bad. They will never encourage you to have the godly sorrow what the Bible talk about. Godly sorrow. They will never encourage you if you have godly sorrow. And if you and if you have godly sorrow, then discourage you from having godly sorrow. Then tell us you're too hard for yourself. It's not and I, you, and I you're too hard for yourself. You have, you have the fear of God in you. That's the, that's the reason why. You fear God and God love that. God love the fact that you fear him. That when you fall, you start to think about him. You start to go to him and, and cry out to him. Yes, I confess things to him. God love it. God love him. He really want to please him. But what they do, they discourage godly sorrow and say, you're too hard for yourself. God love you. Uh, God not care about your sin. These people have the tongue of the serpent in their mouth. As a serpent speak. And the same thing, Satan tell um, I am Eve. These prophets is the tongue of the serpent is in their mouth. Telling you about this is okay for you. This is okay to you don't feel bad about that. The Bible says godly sorrow lead to repentance, but worldly sorrow what lead to death. Don't be distracted, people of God. Do not be distracted. Your soul is important. God will guide you into all things. The Bible says God already delight in your prosperity. God wants you to prosper. God wants you in a position where you can help out the poor. Because the Bible always talks about you helping out the poor. No worry about that. The real worrying is you organizing that life to please him. The real worry about you is putting this life together so that God can be well pleased. So God can say you're faithful. You're a faithful servant. There's two things. There's two statements. This is a one statement we're going to meet upon or the other statement we're going to meet upon. What are those two statements? One, I go say, get away from me. I don't know you. You worker of iniquity. And the other one, I, 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 I either say, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into my rest. Which one? Which one do you want to hear? I want to hear that, that I was faithful to him. Me don't want to hear say, get um, move from away, get 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 away from me. I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear get away from me. Where where am I gonna go if, if God say get away from me? Where may I go? 
I have nowhere else to go. If it's not God, it's hell. If I don't have God, I have nothing. I have nowhere to go. I have no choice. That's what I tell us. All of you servants of the Most High, you have no other choice but to live for God here. Yeah? There's no other way. If Christ ever said, depart from me, I'm going to look around and say, God, I, but I have nowhere else to go. It's only you. So better me prepare for now. Come in, I want you to depart from me later. I don't want to hear depart from me later on. It's a scary thought to know that when you, when you enter the presence of the King of all kings, the great majesty, and he look at you and him say, move away from me. Get away from me. All this time you've been working. Iniquity. That's what the Bible says, you know. The Bible says iniquity. I'm, 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 I'm going to tell them, said so, so, so in their work. Uh, the, the scripture says lawlessness as well. It means that we were, we, we were not living according to his ways. We were living unlawful. We are living how we wanted to live. Following our ways. Living our truth. Glory to God. I don't want to hear that, people of God. And I don't. I, I, nobody really wants to hear that. But guess what? We have to prepare ourselves from now. Will we enter his rest? Or will, or, or will we hear, depart from me? I don't want to for anybody. And that's the reason why your brother is always here. Convicting your soul more and more. Tell the sinners them, come on, come sinners. You don't have to change. You don't have to change to serve God. Serve God and He will help you change. Come on, sinners, all, all of you out there. God came for you to repent. I'm a sinner myself. I'm a wretched soul in need of the Savior. And I recognize, I recognize that. And I come to Christ. And He's making me. And He's molding me. You can do the same to come along. Because a day is coming where we shall be judged for all the life. Everything that we said, how we treat our body, how we treat other people on this earth. We're going to be judged for all those, all those things. I know your pastor not telling you these, these dangerous scriptures, but let me tell you the dangerous scripture. The Bible says, Christ himself says that every single idle word you speak, they're going to give an account for it. We better start repent of the things that come out of our, out of our mouth. Many, many times I, when I sit by myself, I repent of everything that came out of, out, of, out, out of my mouth. Every word that I want to season with salt. Every bad word I, I, I um, may have a curse. Every curse word. Every idle word. Father, forgive me. Father, forgive me. Glory to the Almighty. So may we stay focused, people of God. Everybody is out here crying like John in the wilderness, saying, repent, repent, repent. Everybody, everybody is here crying like John in the wilderness, saying, prepare you your way, prepare yourself. Glory to the Almighty. Your brother is here crying like John in the wilderness. And the Lord is coming. No problem, brother um, Ben. Just message me, alright? Glory to God. Let's go into Luke. Thank you, Lord, for that scripture right there. Luke. Which is, which is the what, what we'll be going through in um, in the in the in the, in the um in the group. Here's her brother crying out. 
trying to save my soul and then try to save the soul of my people on this earth. Not, not me saving the soul, but saying, save yourself from this wicked generation. Turn to Christ. Remember your soul. What is what is the, the gain in what what is the true benefit in gaining the world and losing a soul? This is what these false prophets are telling you to come, come and gain the world. Come and use Christ to gain the world. That's what they're saying. Come and use God as a means to an end. Come and use God to get a husband. Come and use God to get a car. Come and use God to get us a visa. Come and use God to clear your passport. Come and use God. Come along. That's how they, they, they advertise God now. They advertise God, God like God is a genie. They advertise him like as if he's some genie. But he never said, come and make your way straight. Come and make your path straight. Come and repent of your sins. And even those of your forefathers, renounce this world, renounce the devil. So I have to be crying out. Help me, Holy Spirit. Let me find this scripture here. Luke chapter chapter 3 Luke chapter 3 and verse 8 it says here bring forth therefore fruits worthy of repentance and begin not to say within yourself we have Abraham to our father for I say unto you that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham and know also the axe is laid unto the root of the tree Listen to the word of God. And every tree thereof which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Who better stop bearing fruit of repentance? You think your money can save you? You walk around talking about I am rich, I am I, I am powerful, I have this, I have that, I don't have Christ. You think I can't save you? You think I can tell Christ I have two I have two hundred thousand dollars? You think I can tell Christ you have, a, you have a mansion? You think I can tell Christ you have a man, I have a wife? You think I can tell Christ not know that? Christ don't want to hear that. He want to bear fruits of repentance. Don't make a false prophet to make you believe so you have God when you have care. Make a false prophet to make you feel say, oh, God is with you all because you have one house. And because you have on the latest brand shows and the latest, and that means God is with you. Liars! The Illuminati, them, them have everything to them, to them wanting. Them have God. Them free me some people eh? there. With, with directly work with Satan. Them, them have every link. Them have all type of links in the, in the system. Them have big cars. Them driving tinted vehicles. Them eat any food that they want. They have God. Don't make these people come fool you. Many, many of these, many of these prophets and apostles and so forth, they are brothers and sisters. They are brothers and sisters of witches and warlocks. They are brothers and sisters of witches and warlocks. They only come as angel of light, but they are of the devil. Keeping you distracted on the material things when the material things will, will, will come to you. When God will bless everything. Let me tell you people, whatever you want God to bless you with, just ask God to bless everything that, your hand, that, 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 that you put your hands to. You need, you need a seed so we know nobody preaching to you with, with, with that. Any man that come preach to you must, must preach to you for your perfection. For your edification. That's what the Bible says. For the perfecting of the saints, the fivefold ministers are given unto the, Christ, unto the body of Christ. They are a gift. We are a gift to the body of Christ. And the body of Christ is a gift to us. The body of Christ is not given unto us, and we get given unto the body of Christ. We 
are giving unto the body of Christ for what? They're perfecting. Perfecting me maturity for the edification so you don't get tossed to and fro. Let's go back to the, to the scripture. And now the earth is laid unto the root of the tree, and every tree therefore which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. And the people asked him, saying, What shall we do then? He answered and said unto them, He that has two coats, let him impart to him that has none. Look at what this man is saying here. This man is teaching people how to live their life, how to, be, how, how, how to live. Them prophet in our days not tell if you be kind to nobody. Them prophet in our days not tell if you give to the poor. Them prophet not tell if you live your life. Fear. I don't tell if you do. I can sow seed. And because you sow seed and art and, and this, I mean, in your life, that, that, in your life, your face say, oh yes, God is here now. Don't be fool. Yeah, man. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Scripture say here. And um, let him impart to him that has none. And he that has meat, let him do likewise. Then the, also the publicans came to be baptized and said unto him, Master, what shall we do? And he said unto them, Exact no more than that which is appointed to you. So don't collect no more. You're going to be fear. You're going to live your life fear. Not take more than what is appointed to you. That's what he's saying. He might teach people how to live their life. Then people not teach you how to live life. They teach you how to work witchcraft. Put money in this. Buy kerchief. They know. They, they, they. Hurt me for the best, man. And he said unto them, Exact no more than that which is appointed to you. And the soldiers likewise demanded of him, saying, And what shall we do? And he said unto them, Do no vi do violence to no man, neither accuse any falsely, and be content with your wages. Be what? Content with the money where you get. You get paid, be content with it. Don't be greedy. That's what he's saying to them. Be content with the money where I work for. But look at this false prophet at Telefido. Do not be content with the way I work for. That's what his false prophet come and tell you. Oh, God, God has so much abundance in the air for you right now. They're not teach about being content. And be satisfied. That, that's why that's why majority of them Christians are getting vicious and greedy. And watch people for, for them have and bad mind people for what they have now. Because them, 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 them master tell them foolishness. I tell them how to live foolishly. Tell them how to be gravelicious. Envious. Envious. Want people things. Yes, it's mad you don't care you want it. Yes, it's mad you don't man you want man. Yeah, everything is yes, a people you want. Yeah, I am Christian. You know, say if you be content where you have and continue if you work for what you want. Your prophet not tell you this, but me, let, let me tell you this. Let me convict your soul tonight. And stay for the conviction. Because this is for your soul. This is not, this is not for the material things. Every material thing shall pass away. You only have these things for use. And make good, make good godly use of what you have. But it can't save you. I'm going to go to a scripture to show you something on top of that. <laughs> 